Hello and welcome to another spectacular thing. Today we're going to install GitLab on a Raspberry Pi. To do that, let's start with a Raspberry Pi. Again, we're using Raspberry Pi Imager version 1.6 so that I can do the settings, the advanced options, and get everything set up and ready. So let's choose the operating system. We're going to choose Other, and we're going to choose Raspberry Pi OS Lite. We're going to choose the storage device, and then we're going to say Write. And yes, we want to erase this drive. This will take just a moment while it writes to the disk. Then we remove the card and insert it into our Raspberry Pi and power on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now that we've booted our Raspberry Pi, let's SSH into it. And there we go, we're in our Raspberry Pi. Now let's do the thing that we always do, which is sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. So we can make sure that we have the up-to-date software on our device. And now let's do a reboot. Okay, now that we've installed the operating system updates, let's go ahead and configure the necessary dependency. To do that, we want to install apt transport https. We need to get the GPG key from GitLab into our apt key database. Next, we need to add the GitLab package repository. To do that, GitLabs has created a simple shell script to run. Even though this says Raspberry Pi 2, this is for Raspberry Pi 4. And then we pipe that to sudo bash. It'll do some checks, and then it'll run apt update. It'll make sure that app transport HTTPS is installed. It'll then install the sources list, import the package cloud GPG key, and then run app get update. Next, we can install GitLab. We need a variable called external URL to let GitLab know what the URL of our server is going to be. I'm doing an internal server, so I'm going to have it just over HTTP and the server name is Octavia. And you want to install GitLab CE for Community Edition. Then hit enter. And sit back, make yourself a cup of coffee. I'll fast forward so you don't have to wait that long. Okay, and that's it. GitLab is installed. Let's go ahead and give it a try. And there's GitLabs. Let me zoom in so we can see this a little better. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is set a root password. Okay, click change your password and the root password is set. So let's go ahead and log in as root. And we'll close this and we will close this and you're inside of GitLab. Now we'll go to more and admin area, which is where we're at. We're in the admin area. And you can see that GitLab says update ASAP, which is interesting since we just installed it. <laughs> we have one active user, which is our root user. And yeah, that's that. Let's go ahead and log out. And we can register now. So anyone can register on your system. Anyone can register, but they have to be approved by the root admin. So once you've created your user, go ahead and log back in as your root admin. Go to the admin area. Go to users. Way over here. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, way over here without projects. Click on that and it'll list your new user that says pending approval. So we want to approve the user. We say OK. Next thing that I want to do for this user is bump their pri privileges. So let's click on the Edit button. Here, scroll way down to Access Level, and we can create admin, or we can make him an admin. Me an admin, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then 
That's it. Click Save Changes. Now we've got an admin. So let's go ahead and sign out and sign in as this user. First thing it's going to do is ask you what your role is. I'm going to go ahead and say Development Team Lead and click Get Started. Then we'll close these again and we're in GitLab. Now we have no projects, we have no groups, so let's go ahead and create a project. We'll create a blank project and we'll go ahead and give it the name Website. Okay. If there were groups, you could list the group here. You could change it to a different user, but we're just going to leave it on Spatakly for now. And project description, we'll leave that blank for now. We'll leave it private. Initialize the repository with a readme file. I always like doing that. Let's create the project. Okay. It says you won't be able to pull or push repositories until via SSH until you add an SSH key. That's important. We want to do that. Auto DevOps pipeline has been enabled and will be used if no alternative CI configuration file is found. Okay, we'll leave that. Let's go ahead and add an SSH key. And this is simple. We just take our SSH key from our .ssh folder. Remember to grab the public file. And we paste it in here. Then we give it a name. I'm going to go ahead and give it the name of my machine here, Bria, and we'll leave expires at blank. So then we click add key. So let's go back to our project. Here it is, website. And it's pretty boring. It, it just has a readme file in there. So let's go ahead and clone this file. And you'll recognize this layout it looks a bit like github we can clone this with ssh so let's go ahead and copy this url and we'll go back to our back to our command line let me exit out of the server clear the screen now let's get clone that uh, url hit enter it'll clone the repository and then we can CD into website. And there it is. There's our readme file. Uh, let's go ahead and make a change to it. Um, we'll open up code. And I'll make it bigger so that we can see what we're doing. Oops, that's too big. Back it off a few steps. <laughs> Open up the README, and you can see that the README just has website. Let's go ahead and change that. My glorious website. Okay, we'll make a change, and then we can push it up. You can see here that we can add the change to the stage, and then we can add a message. Um, updated the read me okay so we've added we've updated our readme and you can see our changes here and we're going to give it an update updated the readme uh, commit message and then we're going to commit it and that's it now we want to sync source control so we want to push it's going to push those changes up to our GitLab server, and then we can pull and see if there's any changes on our GitLab server and pull it down. Now there aren't any changes because we haven't made any. So let's go ahead and let's do something simple like add a license file. Okay. So here we are back in our project. Let's refresh. And you can see that 41 seconds ago we updated the readme file. Now let's go ahead and add a license. Well, we'll click this add license button here. And it's going to go ahead and ask us which license, what template we want to use. Well, I'm going to scroll all the way down and use MIT because that's my favorite type of license. Uh, MIT. Okay. 
and you can see it's listed in here. So let's go ahead, scroll all the way to the bottom. We'll change. We'll leave the commit message as add license. Target branch is master. I don't like the target branch being master. So let's go ahead and commit those changes. And there we go. The file has been successfully created. Now if we go back to our website project, you can see that there's now a license file. And if we go back to Visual Studio Code, go to the source control and pull. Give it a second. You can, sure enough, there's the new license file. So we're all set with GitLab. So we want to set the default branch in GitLab. Okay, so for that, we want to go to click on branch. We want to click on new branch. We're going to call this main, because that's what I like to create, call them, <laughs> is main. We create the branch. All right. Now we scroll down, go to settings, repository expand default branch and change the default branch to main and then click save changes and that's that's it now let's go ahead and we will go back to visual studio go to source control and pull from source control now you'll notice down here in the bottom right here Yeah. that we're still on master so you want to click this button let me exit out click this button and choose the origin main branch and now you're on main then we can go back to source control uh, repository branches and you can see hmm this is still protected, but main is the default branch. So anyway, the main branch is the default. You can see that, but there's another way. Let's go to more and go to admin area, then go to settings, go to repository, and select the default branch name here. And this is where we want to change the default branch to main. Any new project we create will have a main branch as its default branch. So that's a good change to make. Other than that, I think that's the only change that we need to make in there. Let's go back to our project, to our website, and we are good to go. We can start creating a website. You can use Git, GitLab for anything you would use GitHub for. Um, this is now set up on your local Raspberry Pi, so it's it's much more convenient than, say, my in my last video when I just set up Git on a... On a Raspberry Pi this is a much more robust solution so anyway I think that's where I'm gonna leave this if you'd like more information on GitLab please please comment down below maybe I'll make another video on GitLab uh, and the workflows that you can do anyway thank you for watching I'll put a link to the instructions in the description below if you'd like to see more of these videos please hit the like button and subscribe so you'll know when new videos are released it also helps me out. Thank you and have a good day.